Generally, Mr. Speaker, as members will realize, the particulars of these grounds are that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagua has engaged himself in acts of omission and commission that constitute offenses under our constitution, offenses under international law, and offenses under our own statutes. On ground one, Mr. Speaker, we will be demonstrating before this house that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagua has violated, has grossly violated Articles 10 to 1A, 1 to 1, 10.2B and C, Articles 27.4, Article 73.1A and 2B, Article 75.1C and Article 129, sub Article 2 of the Constitution of Kenya, as well as Articles 147.1 as read with Article 131, 2C and D of the Constitution of Kenya. And when the time comes, Mr. Speaker, I will be laying detail, article by article, to show the violations. <laughs> On ground number two, Mr. Speaker and honorable members, at the opportune time, I will demonstrate to Kenyans that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagua has violated Article 147.1 of the Constitution and Article 152, 1 of the Constitution of Kenya, the most progressive constitution in Africa. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on ground three, I will be demonstrating before this House to Kenyans and to the international community that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has violated Article 6.2 of the Constitution, Article 10.2a of the Constitution, Article 174 of the Constitution, Article 186.1 of the Constitution, Article 189.1 of the Constitution, as well as the fourth schedule of the Constitution of Kenya. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. It is not a mere document. It speaks to the soul of this nation. Underground 4, Mr. Speaker, I will demonstrate that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has violated Article 161 of the Constitution of Kenya. I will further demonstrate Underground 5 that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President, the current Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, has grossly violated Article 3.1 as read together with Article 148.5a of the Constitution. Underground 6, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Members, I will demonstrate that the Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes under Section 13.1 A and 62 of the National Coercion and Integration Act, the act that speaks to our nationhood, the act that speaks to our multi-ethnicity, the act that speaks to our society remaining together as a cohesive society. And I will demonstrate with videos I will demonstrate with affidavits, I will demonstrate with documents that the man holding the office of the Deputy President has violated the same law that he swore to protect in his own oath of office. Yeah. Underground 7, Mr. Speaker, I will demonstrate before this House that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes under Sections 45.1, Section 46, Section 47A3, Section 48.1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act. Anti-Corruption, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act. By using his office to unjustly enrich himself, by using his office to acquire within two months properties well beyond 55.2 billion. And Mr. Speaker, I will demonstrate before this House that during the presidential debate, if I may be listened to, Mr. Speaker, that during the presidential debate, His Excellency, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa did declare that he was worth 800 million. We are aware that he's paid slightly over 1 billion, meaning that for the last two years, the match he could have accumulated justly is about 24 million. But I will demonstrate before Kenyans that he has properties to himself the ones that I was able to be able to get in my time of research worth 5.2 billion.
billion Kenya shillings. This is what we call unexplained assets. And we must lay the dragon of corruption from the highest office. Mr. Speaker, under the same ground, I will also be demonstrating, this is ground number seven, that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has violated sections two, three, four, and seven of the Proceeds of Crime and Money Laundering Act. Mr. Speaker, you are aware that the Proceeds of Crime and Money Laundering Act is one of those laws pursuant to section two of the Constitution of Kenya that we domesticated because of our international obligations about money laundering. And therefore, by proving the same, I will also be demonstrating before Kenyans that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed international crimes. Underground 8, Mr. Speaker, I will demonstrate that the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya has committed crimes under Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section, 120, under sec and section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. And honorable members will realize that the Leadership and Integrity Act is the law that was enacted by this parliament, none other than this parliament to give effect to chapter six on leadership and integrity of the constitution. Underground nine, I will be able to show, and Mr. Speaker, when we get to this ground, the ground of gross misconduct, I will be able to speak to the house in a very clear manner as to what constitutes gross misconduct as, as, as interpreted by our own courts. And I'll be able to show that the person of the deputy president is a bully. The person of the deputy president has been threatened in public officials. The person of the deputy president has carried himself in a manner that brings disrespect to the office that he holds and therefore has grossly misconducted himself. Underground 10, Mr. Speaker, I will also specifically demonstrate that the person of the deputy president has committed offense, the offense of gross misconduct in the manner of insubordination, insubordinating the presidency and the Kenyan state. The Kenyan state is our soul. And if you, if you insubordinate the state, you are not worth being a state officer. <laughs> Lastly, Mr. Speaker, underground 11, with your permission, when the time comes, I will also demonstrate, honorable members, if we may be listened to, I will also demonstrate that specifically, the honorable Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes of gross misconduct, as I had earlier alluded to, in terms of bullying and threatening public officers.